trees were awesome. This is a tree. It's called a silver birch. And it's grown about five meters tall in about 10 years. But I'm not using birch today. I'm using maple. And I'm gonna show you how I turned a chunk of maple like this into one of my human nature series, The Deer Person. As with any sculpture, it starts with a sketch, which I then draw onto the wood. The top half was actually modelled on me, except for the deer head, obviously. This is why he's such a chunker in the top half. I started this sculpture before I got my bandsaw, so I'm afraid of doing it the hard way. I don't know if you tried sawing hard maple from this position, but it's kind of awkward. Luckily, I'm sometimes super duper fast. Just at carving, though. I tried drilling and then carving this piece to get it off. In the end, I just sawed it. Which just goes to show you that if the first thing doesn't work, keep trying until something does. A few drill holes and chisel thumps later got me through the area under the legs. At this point, it started to look a bit like a sphinx or something. This is what I and many other artists like to call the point at which your art looks crap, but don't worry, it should start looking better soon phase. Unfortunately, that point at which it starts looking better doesn't come until you start putting more work into it. And who knows how many problems you'll hit along the way. But if you stick to your guns and work through the crappy times, then you'll start seeing results. I mean, not yet, but soon we'll start seeing them, I hope. Super serious red lines to show the area I need to carve down to. I try to be careful with those sharpies when drawing on wood because it's easy to ruin them and make the ends all messed up. And I know someone who would potentially murder me for destroying stationery. So if I randomly disappear, you know what's happened to me. Avenge me. At this point, I started getting more confidence in the shape of the sculpture I picked. I knew I wanted the deer man to look deep in thought, maybe weighing up some tough decision or being worried or depressed about something he did. And I think I've captured that emotion even at this stage in the carving. Uh, the slumped shoulders and the front hand hanging down. The head was probably one of the trickiest parts and the ears were so tiny and fragile that I really had to take my time with them. I did actually break one of them off, but I was able to glue it back on, luckily. People will tell you that hand's the trickiest part, and at least in my case, they're right. All anatomy is tricky and hands are just something else. Weird lumps of meat with five sausages sticking out of them. Then it was time to saw it off the base and as I was needing to access the other areas of my knife. I've done this plenty of times, but there's always a slight worry that something's going to go split or snap. This is where the sculpture really started to take shape. There's something to be said for having the sculpture fixed like it was before. You can hit it harder with the chisels and take larger pieces off, but you can't really keep turning it round and examining the proportions. At this point I had the bandsaw and so I was able to cut most of the antler waste off with ease which I'm really thankful for because trying to do that with a coping saw before was a complete nightmare. The bandsaw by no means replaces the coping saw for me but rather it makes it getting rid of the waste so much faster and easier and I can concentrate more on the more important areas of the sculpture. This is where the little clamp comes in handy again for chiseling and sawing off waste before moving to the knife. I tend to switch between using chisels and knives quite a lot depending on what I think I can do a better job with. As you can see the head of the deer has changed a little and is almost done. I made the snout thinner and the eye larger as I thought that gave it more of a deer look and less of a cow look. The hooves are also a little tricky so I spent quite some time looking at pictures of deer legs online. I know, what a very glamorous life I have. Time for a deer lobotomy, no don't worry. I'm fully trained. Not in this, but fully trained. I also spent a lot of time looking at creases and clothes online, something that I always find kind of tricky. Making clothes look like clothes and like they're actually hanging or draping or tight against a figure is really tricky. I painted with acrylics and started as I always do with a base colour on all of the areas. The fur of the deer was more of a combination of washers to try and create some depth. I like using my fingers a lot to rub in the upper layers to help them blend more and I, I figured a striking black for the eye will help it stand out. After that it was time to move on to the colour of the clothes. I tried to make them match what I was wearing at the time of the reference pics to help my brain a little bit. I think you've seen enough of my videos now to know that I like wearing dark colours. 
Perhaps I'm a goth at heart and I just don't know it. <laughs> I made the thing back kind of golden and it seemed to fit well. The antler's got a kind of yellow white base coat with a brown wash on top. I went over them again later with some white and another brown wash and I did a brown wash over the whole sculpture. This really helps to bring the colours together and bring out the details more. After attaching the antlers with dowels and the sculpture to a maple base, this is what we got. All in all I'm pretty pleased with the sculpture. It was in that ugly stage for a long time and I struggled with the head but with some perseverance and banging my head against the wall I managed to get through it. I don't know what this dear man is going through but I hope he can figure it out and find a way to be happier. I think we all have moments in our lives that feel a bit hopeless but fighting for what you want in order to be happy is totally worth it, I think. A lot of people ask me why I don't sand my sculptures and I think I would direct them to this video. Seeing the light hit those different facets left in the wood just adds something else. Shows you that it's handmade and in a sense that you experience all the thousands of cuts that went into its creation. This whole sculpture is made from maple from a local farm which I'm using for all my sculptures in this series. I feel like having local British wood to create British woodland themed pieces is quite fitting. The sculpture is part of my Human Nature series, the first of which was the Hair Man, the next sculpture will be a frog person. Thanks for coming, I hope you enjoyed that video.